Fear. Yesterday, Prime Minister Tony Abbott began delivering on his promise to cut $1 billion of red tape. This is a very important commitment that we've made, not just to the businesses of Australia, but to the workers of Australia and to the families of Australia. But the day was tinged with sadness after an announcement that the cuts had forced the closure of Australia's oldest red tape factory. Well, my whole family has been in red tape for generations. My great-great-great-grandfather came out on a prison ship for stealing one loaf of bread and a spindle of red tape. The entire red tape industry is in shock over the sudden turnaround in fortune. The last government used red tape on everything. Stopped fracking from polluting waterways, stopped media moguls from having too much say, stopped supermarket duopolies. Now they tell us that red tape is holding up progress. We even started making green tape. Now we've got to burn it all. And there's chemicals in there you just shouldn't burn. Other business leaders have endorsed the cuts, saying that cutting red tape in areas like banking has long been overdue. Why should we in Australia have to wait longer than the US for our financial crisis? We already have to wait too long for HBO show. While union leaders organise job transitions into agricultural positions like pork barrelling, most red tape workers are unsure about their future. What am I supposed to do with my double degree in red tape reduction and aircraft maintenance? You don't cut tape, you cut ribbons. We don't make ribbons, we make tape. Without red tape, we'll all be in a real sticky situation. One thing's for sure, repeal day has been tough on an already struggling manufacturing industry. Oh, it's sad, but that's business. The books have been in the red now for quite a while. But not the good kind of red. Not the good kind of red.